Welcome back to this new Pizza Raid tutorial. Today we want to create a golden liquid sphere animation. We will use geometry nodes to create the liquid sphere. After that we will create the material and the background and then we will create some lightning. Let's have some fun. Okay, here we are in a fresh blender scene and let's jump right into the geometry nodes. And let's make a little bit more room. So let's create a new one, which is a GN abstract. And what we want to do now is cut here the line. And we need here now an UV sphere. And we need an icosphere and an instance on points. Let's pipe this here in the points, the UV sphere and the mesh into the instances and this one to the geometry. Let's make here, make here some changes. So the segments should be 15 and the rings 15 as well. I want to change the radius to three and the radius of the iconosphere to 0.4. And to make this later a little bit more interesting, we want to duplicate this one here. So select all the three things, Shift and D. And now we want to search for a join geometry and pipe this one here in the join. Nothing happens here now because we have to change here the segments of the second UV sphere to 10 by 10. And we want to have a radius of 1.5. Five. So we can see now that we're having a small sphere here inside. We want to bring in here a new node, which is the merge by distance. And what this one will do is um, when we are playing here around, you can see that uh, the, if the distance is higher, um, uh, the geometry will be put together here. And as you can see now, when we are doing this, um, this one will affect on each sphere, but we want to have this on the whole sphere. And to do this, we have to bring this into one object and this can be done with a realize instance. So let's put this one here inside. Now, when we are playing, we will get here um, a better or a cooler result of this one. So we want to change this one to 0.8 so this is looking good now we want to make this a little bit more like liquid so we are searching here now for a mesh to volume and put this here in between now we can see that this this one is changing here to a volume and when we are bring this back now with a mesh a volume to mesh we can see that we are having here this kind of liquid effect here right now so let's make here some changes let's go here with a density of 150 by 200 so that's more detailed right now let's leave the exterior and interior i want to uncheck the fill volume and let's go ahead to the volume to mesh and change this from grid to amount and I used here the voxel amount of 50 and a threshold of 30.5. And I increased the adaptivity to one. So this is looking more uh, liquefy, I think. And yeah, you can see here now that we are having here a cool connection between the inner and the outer sphere. To make this a little bit more smoother, we have to search here for yeah, smooth is uh, set shade smooth so at this one and this one looks much better right now yeah to make this even smoother we can search for a subdivision surface put this here in between and change the level to two and that is looking really cool here right now i think now we want to go ahead and animate this one to do this we need here a set position node and put this here in between okay what we need now is um you know, a noise texture so let's search for this one and i want to bring in the color into the offset now we can see maybe let's hide here or let's disable the subdivision surface now select this one and press m this will uh, make this a little bit smoother for now so and now you can see that some stuff is going on but it's a little bit 
uh, yeah, weird here right now, so we have to change some stuff. So let's go with a scale of 0.8. Detail is 2, that's okay. Roughness is 0, and I want to go with a distortion of, point, uh, of minus 0.2. And as you can see, uh, our sphere is a little bit you know, hopping here. Um, to change this, we have to search for a vector, a vector math and change all the stuff here to minus 0.5. So it's now in the same place right now. Yeah, and to animate this here, we have to search for a vector uh, rotate and bring this in between. And yeah, to make uh, this loop as well, um, we can yeah animate here this one as you can see. Um, but I want to change here the axis uh, all the way to one, so we are having a little bit more um, you know <laughs> liquid fight animation in all axes. Yeah, and to animate this, let's bring in here a new window, which is a timeline window. And now we want to go on the frame zero and add here, uh, insert a keyframe. And maybe let's go here with 250 frames and add here, uh, change this to 360 and add another keyframe or insert another keyframe. If you don't see the keyframes which you're uh, added or want to add, uh, keep in mind that you have to select here the vector rotate node and then you will see um, yeah, your keyframes. Okay, and to make a seamless loop, we have to select all the keyframes by pressing A and interpolate mode and linear. And now when we are play back our animation, if the animation is a little bit slow, um, that's not the real playback speed. To see what the real time playback is, you can go here to playback and uh, change the sync to frame dropping. Then you can see what the real animation speed is here. To make this a little bit more interesting, we can add here in between the subdivision and the set position another node, which is, which is a transform. Go back to zero and insert here on the Z uh, keyframe. So let's uh, my right click and uh, insert single keyframe and let's go to 250 and I want to change this here to 360 as well and insert single keyframe press a interpolate mode and linear and now we can see that we are having here cool animation if you want to have a little um, yeah, a little slower let's select here both nodes and bring this here to maybe 500 something like this and that's a little bit slower here right now keep in mind that you have uh to end change the end to 500 as well so and now we can go ahead and add the material for uh this uh abstract animation so let's search here for a set material bring this here in between now when we are going here into uh our uh, texture or material tab uh, we can see that there already a material is on it maybe let's change the name to um gold and let's select this one here on this side now we can hop into the shading let's change to material preview i want to use here a hex code which is uh, this one here it's a little yeah orangey stuff here and I want to change the metallic uh, to right on one. The specula, specular to 0.329. And when we are turning down the roughness, we can see that we are having here a cool reflective material. Maybe let's enable here the subdivision surface again, press M to see a little bit more of the cool reflections here. And for me, it's a little bit too reflective on all over the place here. And to make it a little bit more yeah, imperfect <laughs> or realistic, uh, we can add here a cool imperfections. So let's use here the most grave texture. And I want to pipe this one into the roughness. And maybe a ramp here. 
color ramp. Maybe let's bring the black slider here onto this position here right now. And when we are playing with the settings, let's change the scale to 1.6. And now it's disappeared. I want to increase the detail to 15. But when we are enabling or turn down the dimensions now to 0.2, we can see um, that something is going on. Maybe the reflection is a little bit too hard. Let's go to this one here. And now you can see that we are bringing here in the, these imperfections. I want to go with 0.2 and yeah, something like this. Looks really cool, I think so. And as you can see now, when we are playing this one, I will do this here frame by frame. As you can see now, it is uh, looking really wild <laughs> because it will not stick uh, you know, onto the place. It will move a little bit. So, and to fix this, um, we have to go back into geometry nodes. Uh -huh. And what we need to do now is here in between the subdivision and the transform, we need another node, which is an attribute node, capture attribute. Put this here in between. Uh, let's put this a little bit down. And we want to change uh, float to vector. And I want to search here for a position node course we want to use the position of our uh, geometry here so pipe this into the value and now we only need to put the attribute here under the geometry okay and now when we are going into the geometry tab here or in the modifier tab and in the geometry nodes we can see that we are having here this attribute window maybe let's type in gold or our gold material and let's hit, hit back to the shading and we need now uh, attribute node as well. Pipe this vector into the vector. Yeah, now it's disappearing, but when we are typing in here gold, everything is back on track. And now when we are moving our, um, yeah, our liquid here, it will fit on the place. It's a little bit uh, moving because we are having um, these uh, uh, wobbly effects. So, but it's fixed now on the position and that's cool. And what we want to do now is the scene and yeah, <laughs> the lightning. So uh, let's get started here. Let's hit into rendering. And because we are in Eevee, we have to enable all the stuff, ambient inclusion, bloom and screen space reflections. But we can see that the reflection is not looking good like in our material preview. And to fix this, we have to add here an uh, HDRI. So let's go ahead, use the HDR, easy HDRI plugin. If you don't have this plugin, I will put a link into the description. And yeah, you can add here your favorite folder with your HDRIs, create a world node. And I want to use here the Shanghai Bond. I want to turn down the sky strength 2.5 a little bit. And now we can go ahead and add here a new plane let's scale this one here to 30 in the x and the y that's looking good and let's go into the edit mode pressing tab and change to the select mode of the edges or press 2 and select the edge here of the back press e for extrude press escape and g and uh, z to bring this here in the z location maybe to something like 10 or now oh, let's go with eight and now we want to add here a subdivision modifier so let's go to add, add modifier and uh, subdivision surface and increase the levels to maybe something like four in the render and the viewport i want to make a subdivision here inside of this one so press ctrl and r and yeah, enter um, press one mouse button and escape and the same thing for the upper one so we're having here this smooth corner and as you can see it's a little bit janky here so what we can do is shade out make a right click and shade auto smooth and now 
It is looking better. Now let's add here a texture or a material, sorry, add your new material. I want to use here another hex code, which is this blue. Let's leave the specular like it is. I want to turn the down the roughness a little bit. So let's go with 0.35, that's okay. And maybe let's put this plane a little bit under our sphere. So press G and Z and put this here maybe to something like this. Now we can go ahead and go into our camera, press zero on the numpad, and we are going into the camera here. Let's change here the coordinates. So let's go with a zero by minus 10 by two, and let's change it to the rotation to 85 by zero by zero. And I want to go ahead and change the perspective to uh, autographic and let's go ahead and change the autographic size to 17. Okay that's looking cool here right now so let's start with the lightning so we want to use here our uh, light which is from inside of our scene from the beginning. I want to use this hex color here for this light and we want to increase the power to 10,000 and let's change the radius here from this one to six and I want to enable here the contact shadows as well and let's change the position here to zero by 11 by 0.5 and that's our backlight here for our background now let's bring in here a new light which is an area light we want to use here this white color and increase the power to 500 increase the scale of our shape from one to five and that's it for the light so let's change here now the location to 10 by zero and zero that's okay and want to rotate this to 90 by zero by 90 and now we are having our first light here on the right side and now we can go ahead and duplicate this one shift d and change this to minus 10 which is here now on the other side and change the Z rotation to minus 90. Now we are having here this cool light on the other side. Now let's duplicate this light again. And this light is now our top light. So let's change the location to zero by minus 3.5 by 10. And let's change the rotation to uh, zero by zero by 90 now we're having here this top light yeah and that is our scene here maybe let's go here into the color management and change the look here to medium high contrast or high contrast that's up to you i like to use the medium high contrast and the last thing for um this thing here is now in the camera so let's go into this one and i want to enable here the depth of field so let's do this and let's change the focal length to 7.4 and <laughs> the f-stop to 4.8. Yeah, and that is our liquidify animation here right now. That was this tutorial and if you like my stuff, check out and subscribe to my channel. If you want to support me, check out my Blender Market or Gumroad page. See you there and bye.